I just want to encourage you, if you really are serious about your journey with Jesus Christ, um, I've been watching a lot of things on YouTube and listening to a lot of sermons that I've downloaded onto my phone and um, watching things on on DSTV and and there's some negative stuff out there. Um, you 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 can watch programs that try to disprove uh, archaeologically uh, the findings of the Bible and so on. And you know what happens is that you end up uh, doubting a lot of the Bible stuff if you watch that stuff. And you can start believing things to be untrue in the Bible that you've grown up with to be true, but because people are challenging it all the time. And I realized, you know what, I'm not going to do this. It's one thing to be objective, but it's another thing to realize that, that the Word of God is under attack all the time. And, and it seems that there's a whole move in the world to belittle the Bible and to, to undermine the importance of Jesus Christ, to make Jesus Christ into a man when He is more than a man. He's, he is the way, He is the truth. And he is the life. And you know, here's my argument that I tell people that that maybe don't believe. I say to them, so you know, was there an apple? Was there a snake? The whole story of the fall of man. Did the sea really open? Did this happen? Did that happen? Does it really matter? I find when I don't believe in it, when people try to prove me wrong. What is the result of not believing in it? I feel negative. But believing in it, what is the, what is the result of that? I feel positive. I feel I have hope. I have faith. There's a fire inside of me. There's a reason to live. And that alone tells me that it is true. Something inside of me wants to burst when I believe in these things. And I realize that that's what God has put inside of us. He's put a natural barometer, if you like, a radar that detects the truth. And we've got to listen to that inner voice which He's given us. The Bible says that my people will know my voice. The enemy comes from the back door, doesn't come in the front. If you read that, you'll see that in the Gospels. Jesus says this, but I will come in the front door and my people will recognize my voice. Why will they recognize my voice? Because they practice listening to his voice, to the voice of God. You know what, you can listen to a whole lot of people preach sermons and do all that and you can, and, and you can be blessed by it. And, 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 and you, there is this argument that maybe some things in the Bible have been left out. And so we're not getting the, the full truth, perhaps. Here's the thing that I want to put out there. <laughs> Why not speak to the author of His Word? The author is Jesus Christ. And He's alive. He's alive today. Where? Well, you invite him inside of yourself and he comes to live here, inside. And sometimes we need to just put everything down, put the Bible down. I mean, yes, we need to read the Bible. And yes, we need to listen with our hearts, with God's help and ask him to help us to, to discern what is true when other people are speaking. I'm not saying you mustn't listen to each other, you must. But sometimes we just need to put it all down and go direct. To Jesus Christ Himself and listen to Him. Hold the horses. You know, Jesus said, Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they're doing. Why do they not know what they're doing? Because they never stopped <laughs> to still their minds. You know, we get we get so stuck in the busyness of, of, of life. Uh, we all rush to there and there. And that, that's one of the ploys of the enemies to keep us busy, 
with the pressures. The word Jesus was speaking about the, the pressures of this life who, who, when he was talking about the, the seed, which is the word that was thrown into bad soil and, and the bad soil was symbolic of the pressures of this life. We're so busy, even busy doing God's work that we don't quiet our minds. Be still, like it says in Psalms. Be still and know that I am God. What is and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me by still waters and he restores my soul. And we need to be quiet and listen. Not to our own thoughts, because the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Paul says, the desire of the flesh contradicts the desire of your spirit. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. And that's basically a confirmation. You see, the scripture all agrees with each other. In Isaiah, it says, in the Proverbs, lean not on your own understanding. We need to, and in Isaiah, it says, man is evil in every intent. That's why we need to tune into our spiritual selves and awaken that part of ourselves that God has put there. And just be quiet and let God speak into our spirit. Stop the busyness. In the name of Jesus, you go and you space out and you get stuck into and let God speak. And He will speak to you. Whenever I preach, whenever I, I, I give a message, as I've matured along the, my, my life, the, the revelations that I have got are not from listening to other people. They are revelations that I've got because I've allowed God to speak to me where I am at by meditating on Him and during the day while I'm busy with my plumbing work and this and that, I'm busy talking to Him. And He, and he does what He said He would do in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah He says, I will write my law in your heart. And Jesus fulfills that by saying, I'm going to send Him to you and He is going to guide you into all truth and make known to you everything that the Father has given me. And that's what happens to a true Christian is that God does the writing of the written word inside of you. He says, Jesus repeats a law, he says to Satan when he was tempted in the wilderness. He repeats a Levitical uh, law that was given to the priests at the time and, and that command was we must live from every word which comes from his mouth. We can't live on bread alone. That was the whole point of being in the desert. When the Israelites were set free from Egypt, when they were taken into the desert, God wanted them there, wanted them there so that they weren't distracted and so that they could learn to live from every word which comes from His mouth. That, so that means we've got to live, it's got to come into our life and as we live, uh, in Proverbs it says, acknowledge God in all your ways and He will make your path straight. So in everything we do, we allow ourselves to be the canvas upon which he, he writes his word. And Paul says, I look to the author and finisher of my faith. Now Paul was steeped in the whole uh, Old Testament and all the, the laws of the prophets and everything that was leading up to, he was he trained under the uh, respected Rabbi Galil at that time. And he was steeped in the knowledge and in the scriptures of, 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 of the law and, and, and of the Old Testament. And when he had a conversion experience, uh, that, that understanding of the Word of God, just, just, he, he just had such a clear um, depiction of, of what it meant, what, what, how Jesus Christ fulfilled everything that that was written about Jesus Christ hundreds of years in the in the Hebrew writings before it actually materialized and he explained it all and he says I look to the author he knew what was written in Jeremiah I look to the author and finish all my faith so we need to just learn to tune into the living God on the inside of ourselves and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to clear the clutter that's in our minds and in our hearts and, 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 and speak to us and, and, and then act on the Word. Be a doer. The Bible says be a doer of the Word. 
Abiding in the vine, but abiding in the vine and abiding in the word of God and in the things of God means that not only just sitting there, but, but taking responsibility for our own faith, for our own journey. We preachers often think that we own the gospel. We don't. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone can access the Father and the presence of the Father through Jesus Christ. The temple was curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom the moment Jesus Christ died, giving us access to God. Oh, all of us have got access, so all of us can get a revelation from God and, and edify the body of Christ. No one person should be uh, uh, um, put on a pedestal. I get upset sometimes when listen to this preacher, listen to that. You know the people I respect most in my life are not great preachers. That Pete, they are people that have walked a journey with, with me uh, in my life and have earned the right to speak into my life and have the revelation of God uh, inside of them. So I just want to encourage you to, to get excited, to get on fire, to take, to take joy in your own journey with God.